On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared shared with us three different rope drop strategies for Disneyland and Anaheim. Welcome to another episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dryer, and today we're going to do our rope drop strategy for Disneyland out in Anaheim. And this is a very important episode because this is perhaps the largest park out of all the Disney area. And when you go out to Orlando, of course, Magic Kingdom is one of the bigger ones. We know Animal Kingdom is the largest park due to the amount of area that the animals roam in. But For people and actually walking the parks and going to the rides, I believe Disneyland is by far the largest here in the United States, and it's a good park to go into with a strategy, so that way you can knock out all the rides you want to do in a single day while you're at Disneyland, and Disneyland has so many different lands, especially with their new Black Spire Outpost, Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars Land in the back of the park, is a challenge to get through the entire park in one day. Out of all the Disney parks, I may say that Disneyland and Magic Kingdom in Orlando are the two Disney parks I may consider doing Genie Plus to get the lightning lanes out of just because the number of rides that do participate in that program. But we're going to talk you through the Disneyland strategy today. And of course, wherever you're listening to us, whether it's in podcast format or if you're out on YouTube watching our video format, uh, we do ask, please subscribe. Click that subscribe button so that way you get this content delivered into your inbox every single week that we release it. And if you guys remember, we always talk about the I can do this all day tip of the day. And for us, uh, we've got that merchandise And I'm sitting back in my chair so that you guys can see that on the video version. But we've got new shirts. We've got multiple colors out there now. So lots of really cool merchandise with the I Can Do This All Day logo on it. And again, it's not branded with our podcast. It's just that tip. So feel free, pick those up, wear those to the parks, and uh, let people know that uh, you can do Disney all day as well. Finally, if you find any tips or tricks that help you save some money and make your life a little bit easier, Please support us over at Patreon as well. Patreon is a great platform for supporters where you get early access to episodes such as our Butterbeer episode and how to go to Disney for almost free episode. And those will come to the general public sometime. But for the meantime, our Patreon supporters get access to those now. And then if you don't want to become a subscriber, you can also contribute just a couple dollars here or there for every episode that saves you a little bit of money. And that'll help keep our podcast going. So when you're thinking about rope drop, a full disclosure, there's more than one way to do it. There are so many different paths you could take through the park and so many different rides you could go to that there is always the opportunity to have a different method than what we have. But of course, we're going to give you today three different strategies for navigating Disneyland, which if you've listened to our Magic Kingdom episode, these are pretty similar strategies. When you're thinking about the parks, we want to tell you if you have a ride or attraction that is a must do. If you have a kid who's loves a certain ride or a certain movie, please, by all means, go do that one first. Let them be happy. But our strategies are going to hopefully save you time waiting in line. We want to make sure that you're getting the best rides in every single day. Now, at Disneyland, when we talk through our strategies, one call out that we do want to give you is there are times that we may say, yeah, go rope drop the best and biggest ride. And that's because you want to make sure you get that one done. If you look at the full scale of your day, By doing that, you may save 30 minutes or so because at the beginning of the day, that ride wait time may only be 20 or 30 minutes long, and later in the day, it may be up to an hour in length. So with that, you're going to save, like I said, about 30 minutes. We may also give you a different strategy that says, don't worry about the busiest rides. Go do the small rides at the beginning of your day because each one may have a wait time of less than five minutes, but later in the day, they're all going to be 30. And if you stacked four or five of those rides, you could be saving yourself upwards of two hours pretty quickly. So we want to encourage you, think about that. Think about how to balance that time when you're looking at these strategies. If you think this is the one I've got to do, then by all means, go do it. But if you want to save as much time as possible, then I will say, listen to some of these deeper strategies of knocking out multiple rides as quickly as you can. So that way you don't have the longer wait times later in the day. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Again, if you have a must ride, go do that first. But outside of that, we want to talk to you about our rope drop strategies. And like I said, we have three. 
But with that, we're going to start with if you're staying on resort, you get an extra 30 minutes in the park. So if you are on resort, we're going to tell you, you want to go to Rise of the Resistance first. And the reason is it's so deep in the park, it's so far back, that line is going to be the longest line all day. And if you can knock it out and get away from that side of the park and get back, then it may be worth it to go ahead and get that one done right away. With that, though, the general population strategy is going to follow in suit. And our uh, first recommendation for them is to go do Rise of the Resistance. So when you go in, you're going to go through Adventureland, Frontierland, and you're going to go back towards Splash Mountain and just keep on going past Splash Mountain. And you're going to go into the Black Spire Outpost. And by going this way, you are going to be right where Rise of the Resistance is when you get in there. Now, if you go the other way, which is around by Thunder Mountain Railroad, uh, you're going to have to wind your way all the way through the Black Spire Outpost, and that's a really long walk. So again, we want to say go through Adventureland or Frontierland, and you're going to go straight back past Splash Mountain and go in that side of it, and that's where Rise of the Resistance is. Now, once you've ridden Rise of the Resistance, hopefully your wait time's less than 20 minutes early in the day, but once you've done uh, that ride, you're going to come off, and we encourage you, stay in the Black Spire Outpost. Go over to Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run and ride that ride. Now, there is a single rider queue for that ride, so go in there and check that out. We have heard a rumor that down at Hollywood Studios in Orlando, when you go into the single rider queue and you're walking in, you get to a place where there's a staircase. The rumor is, is that there are two staircases. There's one right there, and there's one if you were to turn around and look behind you, there's one right there as well, and they're both labeled single rider. The deal is, though, is nobody sees the second one because they are walking up and they see that one in front of them and they take that. We will tell you that the Black Spire Outpost at Hollywood Studios and at Disneyland are built to spec identical. So if the rumor is true, it is safe to assume that this is also true at Disneyland, and there are two single rider lines when you go in there. So we'd encourage you when you get there, turn around and go up the other set of stairs because no one's going to be over there waiting in that single rider line. And then you'll get on really quick. So uh, single rider, the Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. We always recommend grab a blue milk, green milk, or a Ronto wrap. And we will talk more about that on our food episode because those are some of the best things that we've had at the Disneyland Park. And in fact, our Disney restaurant episode is going to have some special guests with us. So you're going to want to tune into that. Uh, but then your goal is to get out of that side of the park. So coming out of the Black Spire area, you are now going to be right over by Thunder Mountain Railroad. Not a bad ride to do. This is one of the mountains that does get busy at the park. And about the mountains, you have three mountains. You have Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, and Thunder Mountain at the park. And those are the rides that a lot of people tell you you want to hit right away. So at this point of the day, it's not a bad idea to do Thunder Mountain. Now, once you're done with Thunder Mountain, you're going to want to split up and, and go one of two ways. You're either going to go into Fantasyland and start knocking out uh, Snow White's Scary Adventure, Pinocchio's Daring Journey, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, and Peter Pan's Flight. Or you're going to go over back into Frontier and Adventureland, and you're going to want to knock out the Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, Indiana Jones in the Temple of the Forbidden Eye, or uh, the Jungle Cruise. Those are also great rides. So either way you go, you're going to be knocking out four or five rides in your next little spurt. And then again, from there, basically, whichever way you go, you're going to want to make a circle. So if you do Frontierland and Adventureland, you'll probably want to cut over and do Tomorrowland next. And then loop your way back around towards the Matterhorn and towards Small World and do Toontown and finish at Fantasyland or vice versa. If you're doing Fantasyland, then you'll come out and do Alice in Wonderland. You'll go do... Toontown and do Small World, come back to the Matterhorn or then head over into Tomorrowland. So those are the strategies if you're going to start with Rise of the Resistance first thing in the day. More often than not, that is what we do is uh, knock out Rise of the Resistance just because it's the best ride in the park. And we usually like to ride it twice. So we're going to go get it done once in the morning. We're going to come back get through the other rides, and then maybe after dinner or later in the evening, we're going to go back and try to do Rise of the Resistance again. My second strategy is when you get into the park, you're going to want to go left and go into Frontier and Adventureland and go ahead and knock out uh, Jungle Cruise, Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, Thunder Mountain Railroad, and then make your way into Fantasyland and start knocking those out. The reason this strategy is a good strategy is because those rides are very popular, Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, 
the Indiana Jones ride. And they are going to get to 45 minute to an hour long waits later in the day. And at this point of the day, because everyone is going back towards the back of the park and towards Black Spire and riding Rise of the Resistance, you've got a lot of people out of your way. You're going to have short wait times and you can knock all those out very quickly and save yourself a lot of time. From there, instead of going into Black Spire, I would recommend you stick uh, to Fantasyland, knock out Fantasyland as quick as you can, do Toontown, Alice in Wonderland, Small World, Matterhorn, work your way into Tomorrowland and do <clears throat> Space Mountain. And historically, Space Mountain has at different times had single riders, so we recommend doing that and doing Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters, but then come back out and then go back into uh, the Black Spire outpost towards the end of the day. And the reason is so many people start their day there that if you go later in the day, it's going to be shorter lines and quicker wait times. And you can, again, do single rider at Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. That brings me to our third strategy and final strategy. And this is our I can do this all day tip of the day is, in fact, when you go into the park, skip all of that on the left side of the park and go straight into Fantasyland and knock out Peter Pan's flight first, followed by Snow White, Pinocchio, and the uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Do the Alice in Wonderland ride. Do the Matterhorn, which also has single rider. Do Small World Go into Tomorrowland because Tomorrowland is probably now, for most people, the third place they go to during the day and knock out Space Mountain and Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters and get those rides done and even Star Tours because that's where Star Tours is. And at that point, you have knocked out probably two thirds of the park in the first couple hours of the day or maybe even first 90 minutes of the day if you were moving very quickly. Rides like Storybook Canals, the Teacups, things like that, we may skip just because we know that those typically have shorter lines all day as well as like Dumbo. And we can come back and ride those later in the day when we go back into Toontown. Typically, Toontown's not open first thing in the morning. So uh, you can go back there later in the day. And of course, in the future, they will have uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And when that opens, that'll be the new marquee item where a lot of people will be running back there. If you've ridden it out at Hollywood Studios, you it's a good ride, but you know that it's not the marquee. That will still remain with Rise of the Resistance and then eventually Tron Light Cycles when they bring that over into Disneyland as well. So we would say don't run back to Toontown. Save that for later in the day. But there's lots of good food back there as well. So Toontown's a good time to go is around lunchtime or when you're going to be hungry and eat that stuff back there. But the reason we say that this is our tip of the day is you're going to knock out Fantasyland. And if you're familiar with Disneyland or Magic Kingdom, that Fantasyland is where the strollers congregate and where people get stuck in the park. And it's very difficult to navigate the park around the carousel in Fantasyland when there's a thousand strollers and a million people there and all the little kids are around and those lines become very long. So if you go in first thing in the morning, you knock all of out, you move away from that part of the park and don't return there, you're going to uh, avoid most of the crowd for most of the day. You're going to be ahead of them going into Tomorrowland and doing all that. And in fact, if you do Tomorrowland, instead of going back into Toontown from there, I would probably cut around over towards Adventureland and do Jungle Cruise, do Indiana Jones. Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, Thunder Mountain Railroad, and go back into the Black Spire outpost and knock out your Star Wars land later in the day. By doing that, you're going to have the shortest wait times, and then you're going to have the ability to avoid the crowd because they're all going there to begin with, and then they're going to work their way east in the park over towards Tomorrowland, where you're going to basically do the opposite. You're going to start in the middle, go east, and then you're going to come back west, and you'll be over there when everybody else is out of that area. So those are our recommendations for touring Disneyland and rope drop strategies. You do have three ways to go. Again, there's no right or wrong method, but the second and third ones are going to save you time at multiple rides that will add up to be more than the savings you'll get at Rise of the Resistance. So it's up to you which way you want to go. A good rule of thumb is if you are at the front of rope drop, because at Disneyland, you are able to get most of the way into the park before rope drop. If you're towards the front and you're going to head towards uh, Rise of the Resistance, you're in great shape. Um, but if you're deeper in that rope drop area and uh, you're not going to be near the front, then I'd recommend do strategy two, strategy three, going through Adventureland, Frontierland, or Fantasyland 
before you go back to the Star Wars land, just because so many people are going to go back there. And if you're, you know, the 10,000th person getting into that queue, your wait time is going to be 60 minutes anyways. And now you're behind the crowd for the rest of the day. So depending on where you're at and rope drop may also contribute to your strategy for the day. Like we said, great food episodes coming up. Those are in the next couple of weeks here. And we are going to start at Disneyland out at the West Coast in Anaheim. And uh, we will have some special guests to talk about that. And that is where we have had some of the best foods in our touring of the park. Uh, You'll definitely want to tune into that. We'll follow it with California Adventure and then Universal Hollywood. And then we'll hop back over to Orlando and knock out the five different areas over there as well. Included in that, though, we will also end up doing Downtown Disney in Anaheim. And we will do uh, Disney Springs out in Orlando as well as City Walk in Orlando. Now, City Walk at Hollywood, we will include in the Universal Hollywood episode, and we're going to cover those together. So we hope your vacation is a magical one. If you like these tips and tricks, help us out over at Patreon, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.